Okay, so welcome. So this tutorial is going to be around how we get those product filtering and search features working on Shopify. Now, this is a pretty important one and I've really tried to make it as simple as possible so you can follow it around quite quickly. Right at the end of the tutorial, I'm going to give it a little helpful little tip. So hang around and watch that. But yeah, let's get into the tutorial. So why are we going to use an app and not use something like FinSuite or Jetboost. Now, the simple reason being is that HTML filters that you kind of can use within Webflow only filter the HTML. And what that means is basically all the data has to be present with on the page and then it filters it via your browser's kind of HTML and pulls things around. So it looks like it's filtering, but what it's not doing is it's not referencing a server. Now, why is that an issue? When it comes across to Shopify, you are only able to show 50 product items at a time. So on, one, on a page, you can't load any more than that. So basically, if you were to use FinSuite or JetBoost in this particular regard and try and filter your products and you've got 51 or let's say 100 products, it's not going to load any more products from the database. So you are going to be restricted to only filtering those first 50 results, which is obviously but rubbish. So, in order to get around this, we have to we have to reference the server. And in order to do that, you can either spend hours and hours and hours and days and days and months and months and months basically building your own filtering system. And let's be honest, if you're watching this tutorial and you can do that level of code, then uh, you don't really need me. Right, so we're gonna use an app. And the reason why is those filter apps are able to directly reference the product data within Shopify and they're able to sort it and basically become a hell of a lot more useful and more flexible. The one I prefer and the one that gives us the most flexibility and pretty easy to install is the filter and search app by Boost Commerce. If you haven't already, there's links below. They are affiliate, but it's quite easy way for me to just link stuff to you and you can go and click on it. Okay, so let's start the tutorial. So what I've done is I've gone and created a simple, very simple page that is basically just this at the moment and all i'm going to be using is the navigation just to give us some positional stuff so that kind of do some search things uh this beautiful little design has come over from friends at flowbase if you haven't seen them check them out they're awesome so first steps first is we're just going to create a just a, a navigation element with a search feature in it and the reason being is when you add the search, it automatically creates a search results page and that will be important in a minute. So let's just click onto here. And we'll go into here and we'll go down to our search. We'll add our search. And give it a bit of styling to make it look not look so heinous. Okay, so that's that. So the cool thing about this particular workflow is if you just drop it in, it will work immediately once we configure the app on the other side. So all it needs is just basically this. The app basically picks it up and says, yep, you're good to go. And we're all fine. Now you can do kind of those cool little interactions to hide and do all your boozy bobby thingy my bobs to kind of make this look cool. If you just wanted to have like the, the magnifying glass and you click on it and it expands it, you can do all of that. But for the time being, what we're just going to do is just plop it here and uh, I'll leave the, the more cooler stuff for you to do. Once that is done, we're just gonna make it into a symbol. So pretty easy, just create it as a symbol and we'll just call it, I don't know, navigation. Okay, so that's step one, done. Let's move over to the, to the next thing. So now we need to create the e-commerce functionality because we're working with Shopify and we wanna be filtering products. So let's hit that e-commerce e button and let's do this. All right, we don't need to do any of the configuration bits. We just need to add some products. So we've got something to work with. So we'll add some 50 products. And that's that. Okay, so our products are, are, are completed. So now we just need to head on over to our categories template and uh, create the simple sections and stuff like that that we need. All right, so we're just gonna utilize that symbol that we've created already. Uh, just to kind of make it easy. And now, the way that this particular thing works, and I've pretty much done the, I don't know, it's a Nicolas Cage movie where you can kind of time travel. I've gone through pretty much every permutation that I can possibly think of to try and make this particular process as 
streamlined and as simple as possible. And also basically remove any kind of future configuration or as make it as small as possible. And this particular workflow is the easiest way to integrate it. It requires a very small amount of custom code. And if you can use copy and paste, you're pretty much there and it sets everything up perfectly out of the box. So yeah, so now how Boost Commerce works is basically when you go and you install it, it installs a couple of extra sections I and mean, it looks for those sections and basically loads the code. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to mirror that structure and we want to create a section. Now you could use the liquid tag custom attributes and get really complicated. Or what we can do is we can create a dummy section which basically has the name and everything we want and we just replace the code later on and it's a piece of cake. So all we need to do here is we create a section. So I'm just gonna use control E section and that's it. So now we need to make this an editable section and the, basically what we need to do there is trick you Desley into thinking that yes, we definitely want this editable, but we actually don't. So it doesn't really matter what we put into here. It just needs to have a few building blocks in order to basically to make it. So we're just gonna add in a text item uh, duh, duh, duh. could be anything you want and all we need to do is just set here a option text and name it whatever you want because quite frankly we don't care about that all this is doing is giving the correct cues to the Udesley app to kind of say yes this needs to be a section uh, so just think of this completely plus holder now all we need to do here is create a symbol with a specific name find them in the description below so go over to here, click on there, create symbol, and just copy and paste what this section needs to be called. So basically go to here, we want this collection template boost filter thing, so just copy that and plop it into there and then click save. So that's basically that. No custom attributes, nothing else. Now, pretty much the same thing for, for search. So just let's go over to our search results. And we will just do the same thing. We'll just add in our two symbols. Okay. Uh, now you can just clean this up and just get rid of a, a lot of those. You can't delete the search wrapper. So depending on your store, you can either delete this in the code later on in Shopify, or you can use this to kind of present other data. But for the time being, I'm just gonna hide it just so that it is not there for now. Okay, so we have this. Now we just need to, you guessed it, give it the correct name. So just unlink this particular instance. We'll head back over, grab the next piece of code, which is search template boost, and back into here and create a symbol. Done. That's as hard as it is. That's all you need to do. Not too complicated at all. Now, we just need to configure our app custom attributes. Okay. Download the code over to Udesi to convert. All right. Now you'll see this thing here, additional assets. Now some applications will require you to upload it, but we're not gonna do it this way because of the way that Boost Commerce installs itself. So the best and easiest way is to, again, do what I'm gonna do now. So simply put, we just go convert, download, and now over to Shopify. All right, so this is a completely, completely clean new setup. Nothing's been done to it, except that I've added one app on, which is the Webflow Importer, which we'll need. But now we need to add the filter and search application. You can use the link below. Okay, once you hit this particular section, just install the app. Okay, so once it's installed, you get this particular page and you can select your layouts and stuff like that. And what we're gonna do first is run through this, even though we've not installed our template. What we need to do is then just go, I'm gonna choose the horizontal layout, just click on either one you want. You can change this later on. All right, so once it's finished doing its installation on the default theme, now we need to install our theme and uh, basically run through the little configuration steps. So what we need to do, go to online store. You guessed it, go down to theme, add our theme, we'll drag and drop that bad boy in. All right, we'll publish it. And we will also install our JSON, which is all of our product data. So we've got something to sort.
Okay, so our products are installed. So now we need to go over to and actually install the app onto our new theme. Okay, so what you need to do is just open up our product filter and search. If you see a different screen here, it's basically you just need to continue clicking through your installation process and then come back to this and then you'll be able to do what I'm just about to do. So as you can see, you've got lots and lots and lots of functionality. You can sync your products again. So sync recent updates. So that will load all of the products that we've just done. And what we want to do now though, is set up a new theme. So when we run through that installation process the first time, it basically just sets it up on the theme that's already live. Now we don't want that because that's Dawn. It's not our theme. We want to do it on our theme. So if we go to theme setup, and you will see down here, there's something that says, uh, I have duplicated my theme with this theme setup. Obviously we have not, but it's not an issue. So I have duplicated my theme and then we just literally go down and we choose the one that's live. Say, so let's put our navigation on the top and you'll see the chosen theme is not supported in our current library. Doesn't matter. Your theme you've chosen is fully supported. Aha, it's because we did it. So just say, run the theme setup. Okay, that's finished. Now what it's done is basically configured the, the theme for you. So it means you don't have to add any custom code to your Webflow theme. So you didn't have to add anything into the body or into the head or anything on the lines of that. It's done it for you. And the reason why, again, I like this particular pipeline is if you add those elements manually yourself, when you have to go through and change, say for instance, you wanted to change the order of the navigation to be on the left instead of on the top, it has to run through this process anyway. And what it ends up doing is it ends up duplicating the code that's been placed in it. So you get multiple and duplicate objects happening. So just don't do it. Do it this way. Yes, it's a little bit of a pain that you've got to set up the theme each time, but quite frankly, it's a piece of cake. Okay, so now if we hit preview the filter, uh-oh, error, could not find assets. So that looks a little bit scary, but it's not. So basically what has happened is once it's installed, it swapped out the section that we created in Webflow with its own one. But in doing so, it's removed all of our kind of code. But the cool thing about this app is that it actually duplicates that. So all we need to do is just copy and paste it because we've already created some of it. So go to online store and then head on over to our edit code. And now we've got to do this in two places. And it's literally copy and paste. So it's not, no drama. And you, what you'll do is you'll see here, you've got a collection and you've got search. And both of them have this little purple dot. That means something's been changed on it. But you can also see there's this collection boost original and search boost original. And that's the duplicate. So that's our old original. It says a name on the tip. So if we click on those, you can see it. And we can actually see there's the collection template boost filter that we created using our sneaky little hack. And then if you see in here, we've got that same thing. So what we can do is we just go here, we copy all of that, come to the collection, select all, paste, save, done. Next one, over to search, copy all, back over to search, paste, done. That's it. No more complicated than that. So now if we go and we have a look at our, our collection, we will see our filter system is working. All sorted and, and that's it. So pretty simple. Now I did say there was gonna be a little helpful tip at the end. If you are building a website, you wanna be able to customize it and make it yourself. So there's gonna be a requirement to do some CSS. But this little tip means we can still use our friendly Webflow editor to create these classes that are in here and basically customize it the way we want to. So the way I do it, and again, the link's below because this is an awesome little tool and uh, extension that I found, it's called Hoverify. Now Hoverify is a, is a browser extension that really helps you out when you're doing any form of web development. But basically what it allows me to do is if I go into Hoverify and I can go into this, it's just a very easy way of me being able to click around and see what I want. So I just asked to take that particular class into Webflow. I could go and I could create my own little style sheet page, create a div, give it that class that we just copied it and change the background color to whatever I wanted, etc. And then when I would save the theme out again, it's going to come across with those classes so that it will automatically pre-configure it. So it means that you can still use Webflow to basically style it up. Uh, anyway, that's the tutorial. I hope you found it interesting. And yeah, if you haven't already, please like, share and subscribe and uh, hit that little bell button if you uh, want to see the next tutorial coming up. Catch you later. Bye.